The last thing we need to talk about is lift. Okay. Now these are the lobes on the camshaft, and we all know that as the lifter is riding on here and the lobe comes around, she's going to lift this lifter. Or if you're working with a car with followers, the follower is going to be lifted this way. The amount of distance that it goes up from here to here is referred to as the lift. So when you see cam specifications and they're talking about lift, that's what they're talking about, how much she can pull that on up there. Now, that's a great thing because when this car is operating at high RPMs, really spooling, okay, what's going to happen is we only have a moment for that intake valve to open, get that air in, and close that valve because, as we've already said, everything is very dynamic. It's really happening in here. If we can take and open the valve more, push it down deeper, we get more lift from the cam to do that, we can actually make the space where the air enters in bigger. We can get more air in there. So on the higher RPMs, that sounds like a great thing to do. And in fact, it doesn't impact a low RPM at all. So it seems like a good idea all across the board. But there are other things that are involved, more trade-offs. If I take and I get a cam and I use more lift, what's going to happen is the wear and tear on this lobe is going to be greater because everything is fighting against it more. There's going to be wear and tear on this, on the lifter, on the push rod, on the rocker, and on the springs. Everything is being stressed because it's being pushed that much farther. Also, the springs that we have wrapped around our core, the, the stems on our valves only have so much place to move. They only can go so far up and down. If we make a mistake and we get a can with too much lift, what will happen is that when the rocker arm comes across, we'll compress the spring down to the point where they actually touch. As soon as all those coils touch, nothing's going anywhere. That's called coil bind. The moment that you get coil bind, something's going to break. Something's got to give. So we have to be very careful about that. So when we're working with these things, we're going to shorten the lifespan of the other components because of the stress. And if we mismatch our parts, we can do damage to everything. Now, does that mean that all of our aftermarket cams are, are going to be bad? They're going to cause a lopy idle or it's going to be hard to start? No. Most of the cams that we carry at Moss are referred to as street cams or fast street cams in some cases. They're going to give us a little bit more oomph, a little bit more ability to go, especially at the lower end, without necessarily making the car hard to start or give it an idle that you don't want to live with. Okay. So what have we learned? We've learned that a stock cam is a good balance of drivability, but it's not a superstar in any area. Aftermarket cams can give us a little more in one area or another, but they cost in one way or another for doing it. So we have to buy what we're going to get with a little bit of discretion. We've learned that lift is the distance from here and here, the difference of it, and how much she actually lifts the components that are working. Duration, for example, this exhaust valve opens here and stays open all the way around to there, or this intake valve opens here and all the way around to there. The time that it's open is its duration, and overlap is how long these two pieces here are open together. Thank you.